everyone, and welcome to the second part of Blender to of our Blender tutorial. Last time we went over the basics of how to Im of how to open our models, how to change this window to make it more of like an editing type of uh, easier interface for us to edit, how to join our models, and some other basic stuff. We added a camera. If this looks a little different from how it was originally, it's because I just edited the camera settings a little bit, like the position and rotation a little bit, just because I liked it better the way it was, and I didn't feel like I need to use camera time to show that, so I just did it off screen. Now, before we go into solving the problem of why this black, uh, this is just black and not, not Mudkip's actual texture, we're going to come here and smooth out this model, because you'll notice that these occur. This occurs. So, we don't want this because we want to have a smooth model, and this does show in rendering for some Pokemon. Uh, sometimes even the join function, you'll notice it doesn't appear in texture because the join function seems to texture it, uh, the texture it out. But I like to have a smooth model when I'm dealing with it in the first place because they're, because I just, that's just me. And, uh, besides, it's just better to be safe because sometimes it may show when you don't notice. So I'm gonna hit, uh, when you hit, go tab into edit mode, um, all of the vertices are selected. If they're not, you can just hit A to select them all. Come here down, come down here to mesh, vertices, remove doubles, and that should solve our problem. Yeah, see, the aisles are gone, this mouth looks a little disjointed, however, it's, it seems more connected to the actual model, and this looks all together more of a single model, and uh, looks smooth. So, that's all we had to do there. Basically, the vertex vertices were affecting too many edges, and we wanted to remove that, so we just hit remove doubles, and that's how we smooth out our model. Now, the lighting problem, there are two ways to go to go at it. Now, the first way is adding external lighting. Like I said in the first episode, some of the models that you download from ROE Studios will already have like a camera set up and external lightings on the side. And uh, you are free to use those and you are free to render like that. However, um, there is another way and I prefer that way over like, having external lighting and I will show you guys that in a moment. But first, let's go over our external lighting. So if you hit Shift A, we'll, we can come down here to Lamp and we can also come down here to Add so if we really wanted to. So. But lamp doesn't, well, lamps come up here, it's just a different position. You can mouse over these to see what they all do. I'm gonna hit sun. And, uh, you'll notice that the texture automatically changes. Now, I'm also gonna come down here, viewpoint to render. This basically shows us the rendered image and how everything we do here affects this rendered image. The sun will emit a constant, um, amount of light, which, uh, the amount of light it emits is called energy. I'll go over that in a moment. It emits this light and and distributes it equally along this line down here. Now we can scale that up, we can decrease it, whatever we want to do. But we don't really want to do any of that, we'll just drag it here and uh, see what happens if we rotate this panel of light. Let's click X90, R, X for, R for rotate, X for X axis, and then we rotate it 90 degrees in X axis. And we'll notice that the model changes a lot. We can see Mudkip's face lit up, its body's a little less because uh, this light doesn't actually reach the back, at least more in the front. Now, this is nice and all, and it is good for visual effects how, um, in terms of lighting. However, I don't like it as much as the other method. And the reason for that is because when you start animating, you'll notice that the lighting changes. And excuse me, I forgot to go over something uh, before that. So if we hit the sun, come back here, we'll rotate it, blah, 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 exactly what I did. Last time, uh, we can also come down here to object data. This is an important tab for almost any object you're dealing with because it allows you to edit some properties that are super important. Like in this case, we can edit the energy, makes it brighter, and you will notice it messes around with color. This is also something I don't something I don't like because if we make the lamp too strong and if it's uh, positioned a certain way, it might make the color it might mess up the color and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's so when animating, I don't really like having to animate my lamps and deal with them too. So a way we can fix this is we can come here to Materials tab on when we select Mudkip or join Mudkip. Whether you join them or not really doesn't matter because if you had three separate meshes, these would be three separate materials. But uh, since you have, if you join them, you should have three different materials or more here. Uh, what we want to do is we want to come here. We want to click Emit. We want to change the Emit value to one. Now you don't have to change it to one. You can change it to pretty much anything you want. You can test it out if it's too bright, but I like one for Mudkip because it seems to work out. So if we click all of them one, we'll notice that, hey, we don't need external lighting because this automatically emits its own source of light and the texture looks okay. And we don't have to deal with the light with having outside lighting. We can animate it the way we want to this way. So that is why I like the emit value. However, um, you can use the outside lighting if you like, but 
I discourage using both. Because you saw already when I made the energy stronger that that the color changed. And if we have an emit value to go on top of that and outside lighting, it would definitely change the color and you'd have a uh, problem to have having to deal with that. So that's why I um, if you want to use outside lighting, go ahead, but don't mess with the emit value if you're going to do so. And uh, that's really about it. Now we've finished, we have found out how to um, light up this image and have a picture of a Pokemon um, with color and we can position our camera however we want to do that. But we can basically color this, we can shade it in, we can do whatever, we can make all the texture, but we basically made this texture viewable in the render screen, which is what we were aiming to do. So. That is going to be all I'm going to be covering in this tutorial, so thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, next part we are going to be actually editing armatures, and if you don't know what an armature is, armature is basically ed to make the skeleton of the Pokemon, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that as much as I am. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, if you enjoyed, please leave a like, and if you want to see more of my content, feel free to hit that subscribe button and stick around, and hopefully you'll find something you like. And uh, if you have any, as usual, if you have any questions, uh, comment below. Blender and the ROE Studios website will also be in the description, same as the last video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.